All right, so uh, we are diving into a real head scratcher today. Yeah. We've got reports of some really strange fog uh. popping up all over the place. And to make things even weirder, yeah. there's been this spike in radioactivity levels, mm. especially in Texas. Okay. You know, the kind that make Geiger counters sing. Right. And uh, we've got a map showing some pretty intense hot spots. Interesting. And uh, I'm already getting goosebumps just thinking about the possibilities. It is a fascinating coincidence, isn't it? Right. At first glance, yeah. fog and radioactivity seem totally unrelated. Uh -huh. But sometimes the most intriguing discoveries come from exploring those unexpected connections. Yeah, what if those eerie fog banks rolling in are yeah. somehow tied to those radioactive readings? Mm. What if it's not just a coincidence? Yeah. So let's start with the basics. Right. Can you give us a quick breakdown of radioactivity? Okay, imagine an atom. Okay. It's the tiny building block of everything. Yeah. As a kind of miniature solar system. At the center, you have the nucleus, hmm. which can be unstable in some atoms. Right. Radioactivity is basically that unstable nucleus trying to become more stable by releasing energy in the form of particles or waves. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah. this map we have shows CPM mm -hmm. counts per minute levels in Texas, yeah. ranging from what we might expect in the natural environment, zero to 50, all the way up to over 200. Wow. That's a huge jump. It is. So what could be causing those higher readings? Well, that's the million dollar question. Right. The normal background radiation we encounter every day comes from naturally occurring sources like radon gas in the soil. Uh huh. But when you start seeing levels jump that high, mm. it could indicate something more unusual. Mm. We need to consider if there's a possibility of medical waste, right. industrial activities, or in rare cases, something related to nuclear material. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's a lot to process. Yeah. But let's bring the fog back into the picture. I remember learning how regular fog forms, you know, with water vapor condensing around dust particles in the air. Right. But could those radioactive particles you mentioned also be acting as those condensation nuclei? It's a fascinating question. Is that even possible? And the answer is not so straightforward. Okay. It depends on several factors. Yeah. Including the type and concentration of radioactive particles. Okay. For example, if we're talking about radioactive dust. Right. Those tiny particles could theoretically serve as condensation nuclei, uh -huh. much like regular dust particles, mm. potentially facilitating fog formation under the right atmospheric conditions. So you're saying that if those hot spots in Texas are kicking up radioactive dust, yeah. that dust could potentially contribute to the formation of fog. It is a theoretical possibility. That's wild. And we have to consider the fact that we've seen increased fog globally. Okay. Not just in Texas. Right. It's not necessarily a direct cause and effect relationship. Right. We can't ignore the influence of normal meteorological factors like humidity, uh -huh. temperature, mm. and wind patterns. Mm these could be playing a much larger role. Okay, so we're not jumping to conclusions here. Right. We've got a potential connection, Yeah. but we need more information. Uh-huh. So if we really want to get to the bottom of this, what kind of research would we need to do? We need to get down to the nitty gritty and analyze the fog itself. Okay. We'd be looking for the presence of those specific radioactive isotopes we discussed. Right. And not just their presence, but their concentration and distribution within the fog. Okay. Comparing that data with detailed meteorological information could then show us if the fog's formation coincided with specific weather patterns or conditions that might be carrying those particles from the hotspots to other areas. Right, because if those radioactive particles are somehow hitching a ride on the wind and influencing fog formation elsewhere, exactly. that would be a pretty big deal. And I know what everyone's thinking, what are the potential health risks if this fog is carrying radioactive material. That's a valid concern. Yeah. And it's where things get even more complex. Okay. The impact of radiation exposure depends on several factors, uh -huh. including the type of radiation. Okay, I'll hold on back up for a second. Yeah. We need to go deeper on this type of radiation thing. Sure. I know there are different kinds, like alpha, beta, and gamma. Right. Does it matter which one we're talking about here? It absolutely does. Okay. Different types of radiation interact with matter in different ways, uh -huh. and their potential health effects vary significantly. Mm. For example, alpha particles, which are essentially helium nuclei, okay. are relatively large and heavy. Yeah. They can be stopped by a sheet of paper or even your skin. Wow. 
But if alpha emitting isotopes are ingested or inhaled, right. they can cause significant damage to internal tissues. Oh, wow. Then you have beta particles, mm -hmm. which are electrons. They can penetrate further, requiring a thicker material like aluminum to yep. stop them. And then there's gamma radiation, right. which is pure energy, mm. like light, but with much higher energy. Uh -huh. Gamma rays can penetrate even deeper, okay. requiring lead or concrete shielding for protection. Okay, that's actually super helpful. I always get those mixed up. Right. But getting back to our foggy mystery, yeah. if those particles in Texas are emitting any of those types of radiation, wouldn't we be seeing some immediate effects? Well, I mean, wouldn't people be getting sick? That's where things get really tricky. Okay. We have to remember the concept of half-life. Right. Each radioactive isotope decays at a specific rate, uh -huh. which we measure by its half-life. Okay. The time it takes for half of the radioactive material to decay. Mm. Some isotopes have half-lives of minutes or hours, uh -huh. while others can have half-lives of years. Oh, wow. Decades Ugh. or even millennia. So even if those hot spots are emitting radiation, it might be at such a low level or decaying so slowly that we wouldn't necessarily see immediate dramatic health effects. Exactly. <laughs> okay. It's not like in the movies where people start glowing green the moment they encounter radiation. Right. The reality is much more nuanced. Yeah. We need to consider the specific isotopes involved, their decay rates, the types of radiation they emit, and the concentration and duration of exposure. Okay, so we're not ruling out potential health risks, but we're also not hitting the panic button just yet. Right. We need to gather more data and understand the specifics of the situation. Uh -huh. But I have to ask, have we ever seen anything like this before? Oh. Are there any historical examples of radiation potentially influencing fog formation? There are some intriguing historical parallels, so not exact replicas of what we're discussing. Right. For instance, after the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, uh -huh. there were reports of unusual fog formation in areas affected by the radioactive fallout. Some scientists speculated that the radioactive particles might have acted as condensation nuclei, right. contributing to the fog. Okay. But the research on that is still inconclusive. Wow. So we're not dealing with an entirely new phenomenon here. Right. There's at least some precedent for this kind of thing, which makes it all the more fascinating. Yeah. But even if we do confirm a connection between these hot spots and the fog, uh -huh. what would that mean for us? Hmm. What are the broader implications here? If we connect this to the bigger picture, okay. the implications are quite significant. Yeah. First and foremost, it would change our understanding of atmospheric processes. Right. We'd have to factor in the potential influence of radioactive particles on weather patterns and cloud formation. Mm -hmm. And that could have cascading effects on everything from climate modeling to air quality predictions. Okay, so we're talking about a potential paradigm shift in how we understand the atmosphere. Right. But what about the practical implications? How would this affect our daily lives? Imagine if certain areas had to be designated as radiation risk zones, mm. potentially impacting everything from agriculture and transportation to tourism and real estate values. Right, because it's not just about the fog itself. Yeah. It's about the potential invisible threat that it might be carrying. Exactly. We might have to rethink how we monitor and manage radiation risks in a world where those risks are literally floating in the air. Precisely. Okay. And we might need to develop new technologies and protocols for detecting and mitigating those risks. Right. Think about things like advanced air filtration systems, specialized protective gear, or even early warning systems that alert people to areas where the fog might be carrying elevated levels of radiation. It's mind-boggling to think about the potential ripple effects. It is. And it makes you realize how interconnected everything is. Yeah. Something as seemingly simple as fog could have far-reaching consequences on a global scale. It really underscores the importance of continuous environmental monitoring right and a proactive approach to addressing potential hazards uh -huh. we can't afford to wait for a crisis to hit before we start taking action absolutely we need to be prepared for the unexpected especially when dealing with something as potentially dangerous as radiation right but let's not lose sight of the bigger picture here yeah this whole situation highlights the incredible complexity of our planet and the interconnectedness of all its systems. It does indeed. Yeah. And it's a testament to the power of scientific inquiry. Right. Sometimes the most unexpected discoveries come from asking the right questions oh. and being willing to explore the unknown. It really makes you wonder what other mysteries are hidden in plain sight 
just waiting for us to connect the dots. And it challenges us to think critically and not simply accept things at face value. Right. What might seem like an isolated incident, like some unusual fog, mm -hmm. could potentially be a symptom of something much larger, more complex. Right. It's like that saying, we can't see the forest for the trees. Exactly. Sometimes we get so focused on the individual details that we miss the bigger picture. But speaking of seeing the forest, what about the potential impact on the environment? Mm. We've talked about the health risks for humans. Right. But what about the potential effects on plants and animals? That's an incredibly important question. Yeah. And one that deserves further research. Mm -hmm. We know that different organisms have varying levels of sensitivity to radiation. Okay. Some plants, for example, are known to be particularly susceptible to radiation damage. Right. And if the fog is carrying radioactive particles, those particles could potentially be deposited onto vegetation soil and water sources, potentially affecting entire ecosystems. So we're not just talking about a potential health risk for humans, but a potential e ecological disruption as well. Right. That adds a whole new layer of complexity to this situation. It does, and it raises some ethical questions as well. Mm. If we discover that human activities are contributing to the spread of radioactive materials through the fog, yeah. what responsibility do we have to mitigate those risks and protect the environment? Right, because it's one thing to acknowledge the scientific reality of a situation, wow. but it's another thing entirely to grapple with the ethical implications of that reality. Yeah. But I think you've hit on something really important here. Okay. This whole situation is a powerful reminder that we're not just passive observers of the natural world. Right. Our actions have consequences both intended and unintended. Mm. And those consequences can ripple outward in ways we might not even imagine. Absolutely. This isn't just about fog or radiation. Right. It's about our relationship with the planet and our responsibility to make informed choices that consider the well-being of all living things. Okay, so we've explored the science, we've pondered the potential risks, and we've even delved into the philosophical and ethical implications of this whole radioactive fog phenomenon. Yeah. What's the bottom line here? Mm -hmm. What do we want our listeners to take away from this deep dive? The key takeaway here is that we're still in the early stages of understanding this phenomenon. Right. There's a lot we don't know. But that uncertainty shouldn't paralyze us. Mm -hmm. It should fuel our curiosity and drive us to seek answers. Right. We need to encourage continued research, support the scientists who are working, to unravel this mystery and stay informed about new developments. And perhaps most importantly, we need to be willing to challenge our assumptions and embrace the possibility that the world is far more complex and interconnected than we might realize. Beautifully put, it's a reminder that the pursuit of knowledge is an ongoing journey. Yeah. And that even in the face of uncertainty, there's always the potential for discovery and innovation. Well, I think we've given our listeners plenty to chew on today. I agree. This deep dive has been a real mind bender full of twists and turns, and I have a feeling we'll be revisiting this topic as more information comes to light. It's been a pleasure exploring this fascinating topic with you. Yeah, it has. And to our listeners out there, keep those brains buzzing, stay curious. And as always, thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.